The HomePod 2 is Apple's new speaker. Here it is. The sound quality is pretty good for 300 bucks, but it has one huge flaw, which is why I'm pretty sure it's unfortunately going to fail. So the highlights, it looks and sounds pretty good. I think the audio quality is pretty decent for the price. It comes in two colors, black or rather midnight and white, which I have here. Because of the 360 degree audio sensor, it's pretty easy to set up and move around your room and sounds pretty great no matter where you put it. The Apple integration works nicely. It's got Siri to help with basic commands and it even has a new temperature and humidity sensor if you're into that sort of thing. But I'm gonna stop here because it's got such a big flaw that unfortunately I can't recommend it to the majority of people looking for a speaker. And that's that it does not have Bluetooth or an auxiliary input or HDMI. You gotta have an iPhone, a Mac, or an Apple TV in order to use this thing, which is a real shame and classic Apple. It really sucks because Apple's been marketing this thing as a hi-fi speaker, which is something really only audiophiles care about, and I don't think they're gonna go buy this thing because it's just so limited. Apple, we've been here before, three times already. First, way back in 2006 when Steve Jobs unveiled the first Apple speaker, the iPod Hi-Fi. And I actually, I actually have one right here. This is the iPod Hi-Fi that came out in 2006. Music has always been a part of Apple's DNA. Steve Jobs was an audiophile himself, and he marketed the iPod Hi-Fi as a sleek solution for audio enthusiasts. But it didn't sell, and it was discontinued the following year. Now, I love the iPod Hi-Fi, and I actually have two of them. If you stick around at the end of this video, I'll actually test it against the new HomePod and show you why the iPod Hi-Fi is still a better speaker after 17 years. Apple learned that most people don't really care about sound quality, and the ones that do are going to shell out thousands of dollars for an optimized system. So for 350 bucks, the iPod Hi-Fi was a hard sell, and there were a lot of other competing speakers on the market that were far cheaper. Apple tried again in 2018 with the first HomePod, which had Siri. And once again, it was priced at 350 bucks. And once again, it failed because there were cheaper speakers on the market and the HomePod lacked Bluetooth connectivity and had no auxiliary input. So Apple tried yet again, and this time released a smaller speaker, the HomePod mini, this time for $100, and it actually sold fairly well, but the audio quality was worse because it was a smaller speaker. And for whatever reason, Apple has decided to try a fourth time with the HomePod 2, this time priced at $300, so it's $50 cheaper, but once again, it has no Bluetooth connectivity, no auxiliary input, and no HDMI input either. However, it does have a power cable that can be disconnected, which the first HomePod did not, which is a nice add-on, but you gotta have an Apple device to use it, and at $300, it's still more expensive than many other speakers on the market. They might not sound as great, but at least they have Bluetooth or an auxiliary or HDMI input. And once again, the people this speaker is marketed to, audiophiles like myself, are probably not gonna buy it because it's a closed system and we want more features. If you have a record player, you can't use it. If you have a hi-fi audio device like a Walkman, can't use the HomePod. If you wanna hook it up to an existing speaker system or TV, you gotta have an Apple TV. These are all things that the iPod Hi-Fi, which came out nearly two decades ago, is still able to do because it's got an auxiliary input. I use one as my studio monitor for editing videos, and I have another one hooked up to my TV that I use as a soundbar, and it works great. The new HomePod can't do that, at least not as easily. The Hi-Fi has an aux input. It's got a removable power cable. It has a removable grill even that you can take off, and you can even put rechargeable D batteries in this thing, pick it up, and take it with you, and it is a wireless speaker. The HomePod 
is not. The HomePod does have one thing going for it, which I really like. You can buy two of them and you can sync them together for a studio experience and use them as speakers for your TV, which actually work fairly well with Dolby Atmos. Or you can connect multiple HomePods or HomePod midis together in a system throughout your house and have nice connected music in every room as you walk around, which I really like. But now for the comparison test we've all been waiting for. Does the new HomePod sound better than the nearly two decade old iPod Hi-Fi? Let's find out. For the first test, I placed both in a fairly large room and cranked the volume all the way up to simulate the experience of a house party. So this was a pretty quick test because the Hi-Fi gets way louder than the HomePod. The HomePod sounds pretty bassy at lower levels, but when you crank both of them up, it's apparent that the Hi-Fi has a much stronger punch and just fills the room with just distortion-free, loud sound. So for a party atmosphere, iPod Hi-Fi sounds way better. And now for a test in a smaller room, let's see if the HomePod excels in a more intimate environment. So I'm in a smaller room now and I've got the HomePod right here on top of the Hi-Fi. And it's a little bit different here because what I've noticed is the HomePod doesn't get nearly as loud, but it's got a much punchier bass at lower volumes than the Hi-Fi, which is interesting. So it, I don't think it sounds as good as the Hi-Fi, even at lower volumes. I think the Hi-Fi still sounds better. Um, I think it's it sounds clearer actually. Um, but the HomePod got a punchier bass that you definitely notice listening to in smaller rooms and at lower volumes. So I'm done with my tests and the iPod Hi-Fi wins. It sounds way better. It gets way louder and it just feels like there's this presence of a sound stage that you just don't get with the HomePod. The HomePod still sounds great. And actually at lower volumes, I think the treble is a little bit better than the iPod Hi-Fi, but it's just not as good of a speaker in my opinion. I, I just, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna hang on to this thing and maybe even buy a few more if I come across them someday. It's got just two huge girthy handles that I can easily just pick this up and carry this around. It's like a boom box. This thing is so delicate and it's like got this cloth exterior and when I pick it up, I can feel my fingers like pressing into the sides and it, it gets kind of dirty. I mean, I did get the white color, but it's just, I don't, I don't love this. I can see, I can see the benefit because it's got the 360 degree that if you put this in like the center of a room, you can get pretty good audio all the way omnidirectional, but hi-fi is better, way better. If Apple could only take the connectivity of the HomePod and open it up to allow Bluetooth connectivity, give it an aux input, give it an HDMI ARC connectivity, and just take the sleek design language and the robustness of the hi-fi, they could be onto something. And they might be able to get true audiophiles to switch. Like, just, just hear me out here. I'm, I might be in the minority here in saying this, but... Imagine a system with the iPod Hi-Fi, the HomePod connectivity, and a modular design. So like there could be even a bigger Hi-Fi, maybe like a really bass heavy like subwoofer that you could use. And maybe you could put two of these as like left and right channels or like a mid channel or maybe hook up even a few smaller ones uh, for surround. I don't know, I'm just dreaming here, but otherwise, what's the point? Anyway, thanks for watching.